Hello everyone and welcome to the NNL Pro Tournament. The path to pro begins here. We're continuing the first round with this huge matchup, RJ Roman and True Becker. I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese. Well, I cannot wait to see what these two very powerful, very technical ninjas have in store. Absolutely. RJ Roman came so close last season to becoming our National Ninja League Season 5 World Champion. And True has been tearing it up on the qualifiers this season. I have mentioned his name so many times on Ninja Lab that I have made it into a running joke because it feels like I'm just saying it's true, it's true every time when someone asks me who took first place in the male elite division of a certain qualifier. Well, let's see which of these two will be able to put up a gold medal performance in this week's Grip Gauntlet. Here's how it works. Each athlete has sent a two-minute grip gauntlet to us, and it will be up to you to determine who moves on based on who had the better grip gauntlet on the criteria of creativity, variety, difficulty, and wow factor. That's right. And remember, everyone, this is not a popularity contest. You are indeed the judge when it comes to deciding who had the actual better gauntlet keep a thoughtful eye and a sharp mind when determining who you think the winner is and before we get into the grip gauntlets let's meet our two athletes true becker is a former teen world champion having won in 2019 in hartford and he followed it up with the sixth place finish in greensboro last year so far in season six he is the leader in the clubhouse as he currently sits atop the national standings it's not just by volume either He's won 12 competitions so far this season as a 16-year-old against some extremely tough New England fields. Speaking of excellent performances in Greensboro, R.J. Roman finished in third place at the 2020 NNL World Championship, having earned the final run of Stage 3 with the fastest time through Stage 2. He's only competed four times so far this season, but he has a second, third, and fourth place finish under his belt against some big fields, putting him in the top 10 in the Season 6 Power Rankings. And for those wondering how RJ Roman got the number one seed in our tournament, that is reserved for the 2020 NNL World Champion, but unfortunately had some athletes drop out, and we wish them the best. As for the two athletes in this tournament, I feel like they have kind of the same style. I mean, obviously they're very skilled, but I feel like they're both, you know, kind of high flyers, more powerful technical ninjas. Absolutely. I would classify both these competitors as all out ninjas. You know, they are mm. going to give you their all. They're not going to lollygag. They're going to go explosive and intense. So I am looking forward and I hope neither of these guys let me down. Oh, I mean, this is the this is the matchup I circled on the men's bracket in bright red. So let's not waste any more time. Here is True Becker. What's up? I'm True Becker, and this is my round one Griff Gauntlet for the NNL Pro Tournament. He seems excited, and the Vitality Dynasty is strong, apparently, as he's starting off with some powerful ring hops. And oh, and an interesting move, going back, and then back to the bottom. Man, if you're going to do a ring toss, that is how you do a ring toss, Oh, no I way. Oh, Ooh. no way. Oh, my. This is insane. Kane moves on a moving ladder. That is not easy, folks. That is not easy at all. And it goes for the 180. Holy cow. Come on, True. Hurry it up. Man, I do not want to be RJ Roman having to watch this. Oh, man. It's a good thing he doesn't have to watch it because every of our competitors, they film these separately into big laches right there. Yeah, beautiful links. Now getting some big ring swings pretty close to the ground here, which makes this Lachey even harder to whatever he's going to. Launches to some more rings. Very nice. Onto yes, the wing we ding. have wingdings. It seems like whenever there's a vitality gauntlet, it's going to involve the wingdings. And you love to see it. Absolutely. The premier obstacle of the NL Season 5 World Championship. Onto the cannonballs. No, Cannonball pegs. Oh, I didn't see the peg in that first grip. You're absolutely right. And he that threads makes... that immediately. Wow. And he threads that immediately, very that... quickly through. 
man, we've seen some runs from other people who have had difficulty with pegs, and those pegs were all a lot easier than what he's having to go through right now. About 15 seconds or so left. Another ring hook there. Let's see if he... I hope he's headed for the vertical limit, but I don't think he is. No, he's heading towards the salmon ladder, I think. Oh, no, the ring. He's for the ring, and... I don't know if he's going to go for the dismount here. But he's got to go for the big finish. And there it That's is. It. There we go. He finishes his gauntlet uh, very clearly. Had things planned out that he that was a platform that he landed on. So it was very clearly that was the determined ending point. And honestly, I'm overall pretty impressed. Just that start. That was an explosive start and some very strong movements in the middle there. I mean, it makes sense to have the really technical stuff at the beginning in case you need to refilm it. But even if that took 100 attempts, I am extremely impressed by those ex very difficult moves going up and down with the ring hop. And then those canes, to me, that was by far the most impressive part of that gauntlet. Oh, man. And that 180, holy cow, that just blew my mind. Uh, such an impressive run from start to finish. I cannot wait to see what he has in store for us if he moves on to the next round. I certainly believe in RJ to try to top it, so good luck. Let's see what he's got in store. I'm RJ Roman, and this is my pro tournament gauntlet. RJ at his home gym of Obstacle Ninja Academy, jamming out to some wing nuts. And, Ooh, I like oh that. Oh, my. Spinning. So, Not let's sure see. Oh, is he going for a big lache here? Oh, it's a it's a flying bar, and it's an upwards flying bar too, with a link to the truss. Oh, a, a, a weird, awkward transition to the cliffhanger, which makes it even more difficult. Yeah. And that's a big pull up too. He's got a vertical limit. Oh my goodness! He's got vertical it, limit stairs. It's a devil steps vertical limit. That was impressive. Back to the cliffhanger. Looks like he's going to transition right here. We've got a crazy cliffhanger coming up. One more swing. And he got, oh, that's an upwards, too. Yeah, wow. The good camera angle to showcase the difficulty of that jump there. And now and I love this weird thing. I know it has it's... a name. I don't know it. <laughs> it's like a gyroscope. Yeah. RJ's so creative with these obstacles. Yeah, he makes a lot of cool original stuff. Now onto the flying squirrel. Chalking up before what I assume is going to be some sort of big grab with this prep here. The hat's, the hat's off. off. Into oh, a nunchuck. Okay. Stingled nunchuck, and he finishes off there. He was so fast. He did that in really quick time. Yeah, I'll say. I was hoping he would have more stuff to do. It was a short run, but the degree of difficulty was way up there. Yeah, I got the feeling this was a case of, similar to what we saw in the past with, with Caleb's run, that you have this course planned out. You think it's going to take two minutes, and then it's like, oh, it only took about 90 seconds because I'm so darn good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he was flying everywhere, like just so powerful, so graceful, just flowing through the air. I don't even have any fancy words to say about it. It was just really impressive. Honestly, uh, this is going to be a tough one. These are two high level high skilled competitors who put on some very impressive performances um rj definitely showed that he deserves the number one seed but it's gonna be a tough battle certainly and the nnl pays me to say words but i have lost them all out of sheer awe for these two runs so let's hand it over to two people who hopefully have some more intelligent things to say lucio batista and henry Ferrarin. good luck trying to grade this one all right, gentlemen, we got quite an exciting one to talk about right now. <sighs> RJ versus True. This was quite the matchup. Let's start with True's run. Henry, let's just keep it simple right now. Overall thoughts on True's run. Uh, amazing. Um, talk about like the ideal grip gauntlet and True uh, just delivers. I mean... Wow, man, it was super impressive all the way through. You had these these really high difficulty coordination moves, 
everything he did with the canes, just like in the middle of the grip gauntlet. And then um, when you talk about, all right, it's amazing. Does it last the full two minutes? Is there something amazing at the end? And he delivered all the way through. Super impressed by True. All right, Lucio. So overall, I think it's safe to say True had a very impressive run. What do you think was perhaps the weakest point if we get a little bit critical right now? Oh man, that is one of the most difficult things to even discuss with this run. True the if I was to say one thing about this run before I even get to weakness is technical. Everything he was doing is super technical, requiring one or done movements. Um weaknesses the only thing I could say to that regard is maybe he could have just done like on the last thing, go to the Sam ladder and maybe do a, something on the Sam ladder, but it's really hard to even give you a weakness there. What aspect of his performance would you say surprised you the most? The ability to one shot those obstacles, to be able to transfer a cane the way he did, that is an insanely difficult move. To take a ring from the peg grasper and throw it up and then back down to one shot, the ring swing. I mean, all of those things. He could have went out on any one of those. But to do them all in succession, yeah. Wow on many That ring swings at the end. Yeah, just crazy. And yeah, and at the end, too, just like Henry's saying, like just it's mind-blowing. Yeah, a lot of mind-blowing stuff, but that's only half of this competition in this episode because we also had RJ Roman's run, which was also had some pretty impressive moves. Uh, we're going to start with Lucio this time around. Um, what would you say were the strengths and weaknesses of RJ's run? All right, let's first of all, let's get this out of the way. My dude RJ did vertical limit in the middle of his run. I haven't seen any other ninjas throw that down in the middle. You'd be put in the beginning of your run, but he did it in the middle after a whole bunch of other really difficult obstacles. So huge props for that. Super impressive. Um, Weakness-wise, again, really difficult to really call out here. The only thing I'm going to say is that he's so fast that he left the whole 30 seconds on the clock. So my weakness there is that you didn't finish out the entire time limit, which that, unfortunately for me, is going to be a glaring weakness because I don't even care if you did rings for the remaining 30 seconds, but that 30 seconds, you left it on the table. So moving on to Henry now, would it be a good idea perhaps to design multiple outs on your grip gauntlet? Like whether it's there's a platform at the end of the nunchucks, but if you have more time, perhaps there's another obstacle you can do or something like that. Absolutely. I mean, you hit, you hit it right on the head. Uh, basically, the idea, and it's, and it's hard. I mean, these athletes are so fast. They're linking everything now. Like, New School Ninja is linking everything. And, I mean, the time went by so quickly because uh, I was just on the edge of my seat the entire time with RJ. It was ridiculous. I'm like, oh, my God, this could be the greatest I've ever seen. And then it only goes for a minute 30. Even if he just started repping out pull-ups, to me, that would have done it. Um, but just the idea of just not doing the full two minutes. It just takes away so much. I mean, you, you'll design a course, and let's say it's a two-minute course, um, and and you're going to go, and you're going to have adrenaline, and then all of a sudden, if you start linking things and doing them faster than you anticipated, and I believe, I, be, I believe that's what happened with RJ. I believe he had more in the gas tank if he needed to. I, I don't want him to get hurt in this competition because he didn't plan correctly. I want it to be his athleticism that got him through. Again, oh, it's, this is a coin flip for me, so... Uh, take it away. Well, figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like we should start with Lucio for this uh, for this last question because you need a little bit more time to think about it. So we're going to start with Lucio. One final question. It's it sounds simple, but it sounds like it's going to be a little difficult. Uh, R.J. Roman, True Becker, who won? So well, I'm going to go with True on this one. The amount of just sheer technical difficulty overall. And the fact that he finished the course in its entirety within the two minutes, I'll have to give it to True. Although I cannot, RJ's run was, it was amazing. Like Henry mentioned, mind-blowing, like on the edge of my seat watching it, the vertical limit in the middle of the course. But True had that technical difficulty the whole way through. Varied grip, wow factor, just like, yeah, can't wait to see it. Hopefully it goes to the next round. 
All right. Now, Henry, time's up for you. Is it RJ or is it true? Who are you picking? Um, all right. So listen as this. All right. I'm, oh, it's so tough, but I'm going to go with RJ because I want the National Ninja League viewers to give him another shot. I want to see him go the full two minutes. So that I'm like, I'm as, uh, but again, true, true is like the master of coordination moves. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost like at that fence, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to pick. So I'm going to go with RJ and just hope that if he does make it through, please let it be a full two minutes because if it was an actual like rule, like judged thing where like you, the athlete has to be two minutes, obviously true wins. Like it, it was an, their both runs are amazing. I want to see what RJ can do with a full two minutes. I really, really do. RJ. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> RJ. I can't. It's hard. Go. Just... Why, don't we, why don't we take it back to us as uh, it, it seems like our analysts are in crisis mode. They're split, but it doesn't matter if they're split or if they side the same way. It only matters what you thought of those two runs. Will, how do they vote? Absolutely. This was a hard one to pick. I'm glad that I'm not the one judging here, but it is your guys' jobs. That's right. You, you right there. It's your job to decide who you think should move on to the next round. If you think it's RJ or whether you think it's true, please click the link in the description down below. It will take you to the poll where you will cast your vote and make sure you do it soon because you're not going to have that much time to place your vote. And you could be the deciding factor of which of these two great athletes move on to the semifinals. And remember, because I know these ninjas have a lot of fans it is not a popularity contest. It is not who you who your favorite ninja is. It is who did the better grip gauntlet. And I know it's tough. I know you want to be like, oh, I want to help my friend. No, it is who had the better grip gauntlet. I'm going to continue scolding you like your father. And now I'm going to send you to your room with no more dinner. As this episode has come to an end, I'm I'm going to roll with it. I'm Alex Cunningham. He's a corpsing William Marchese. Thanks to our analysts as well and to our ninjas. And we will see you for another edition of the NNL Pro Tour. Yes, I'm keeping it.